All right, so we're going to be working on a paint over for Angela. This is the image she submitted. This is a uh, Jeremy Vickery, I think that's his name, a uh, free asset of uh, Arik. And this is a reference. Um, let's jump into Photoshop and take a look. All right, so that's her image. This is the reference. Uh, my first impression, looking at it, just from, uh, from a distance, is that uh, what you have is very close in terms of temperature. I can see all of this area is feeling cool, like in your reference. Uh, you have like a nice area of warmth in here, like a lot of your reference. So there's a lot of good stuff to like. Uh, what do I think we can do to push this further? Um, if we look at the color, it does look like you're going pretty dark in your darks and pretty bright in your brights. So that's good. It means we're using the full value range of the image, right? Um, and somehow, yeah, I feel like your blacks are a little lifted in some areas. Like over here, it feels like we are getting light in places that I would expect to go darker. Um, also, there's a couple of areas that uh, appear a little contrasty. Usually when there's a bright light shining like that, I would expect to see some glow. Uh, also, we should try to be careful of the contrast in the, in the image. Anything that will catch our eye, we want to try and clean up so that our eye goes only where we need it to. Uh, another thing that I'm reacting to is that um, the light coming from the sky appears to be brighter than the sky itself. And this is a tricky thing to get right uh, because you know, realistically, uh, the sky doesn't really contribute that much in a dark room, especially once you have um, practical lights on. Usually the amount of light you get from the sky is so minimal that um, you really wouldn't be able to use it. So let's just try to make sure that nothing uh, inside the room is brighter and the value of the windows. So that means you might have to introduce some gradients uh, on your windows or just leave them. Gradients would at least suggest that there is a brighter light source, maybe off screen. Uh, it might help you make those values feel a little bit more uh, integrated. Another thing I'm seeing uh, is that overall the value in your shadow appear to be a little mixed. Uh, like if we color pick them, they kind of sit somewhere in the middle between gray and blue, or even the warmer ones still kind of appear to be in a weird gray spot. I would try to really clarify uh, what's in the shadow and what's in the uh, warm light, what's warmer. You can see when we color pick the reference, we go towards purple, which is a cool uh, red, essentially. Uh, and that happens also in here, we have like a warm brown in the shadow, whereas in the shade we have a cool blue. So being able to differentiate between a warm shadow and a cool shadow becomes important. So we want to be able to get the kind of separation here uh, so that we can get a warmer, slightly brighter shadow in this area and then cooler shadows uh, elsewhere. So. Now that I've talked so much, let's try to translate that into an actual paint over. So the first thing I'll do is set up just a simple paint over for those windows, right? Because that's the first thing that stood out to me. Uh, also, I guess because they are in the middle of the picture and they take up so much real estate. Um, those bright reflections on the... Um, Oh man, I'm blanking on what this guy's name is. Uh, telescope? I kept thinking of horoscope. Um, so the telescope is catching some really bright reflections that sort of give away that there is a light outside of frame that is much, much brighter than the sky. So if we're going to keep the light, the intensity, I think we should um, just make those windows a touch brighter. So I'm going to set up a new layer and use the selection I just did uh, as a mask. 
so now I can paint freely. Then I'm going to go here and just lift some of those values slightly. Uh, and you can see that as I uh, make them brighter, I'm desaturating them. And as I get darker, I'm saturating them and shifting them towards blue. That's because if we're trying to emulate the way that our eyes perceive brightness, we tend to um, see things more saturated as they get darker and less saturated as they get brighter. So it's no coincidence that the brightest bright we can perceive is white, which is the absence of saturation, right? So if we go back and forth, now they might feel a little frosted. Uh, maybe the gradient is too strong. We can play with the opacity and essentially just bring back some of it. Uh, we could also duplicate it and then set it to something like linear dodge. Um, and that would allow us to then uh, have those glow a little bit. So if we want to we can do something like that, we can kind of give the appearance that they're kind of glowing a little bit. And uh, not too much, just enough so that the edges aren't quite as sharp. Uh, I'm sure if we look at some of your reference, you'll find this kind of glow. Um, they painted it here on the actual light in the room. So if the actual sky was visible in frame, it would even produce even stronger glows, right? Because the light source can only be brighter than the light falling on an object. So yeah, you see all of, this, all of this reference uses glows and halation as a mean to suggest the hotness or the temperature of a light. Uh, so we're doing the same thing now. We are making those windows appear brighter, both by painting them brighter and making some halation around the edges um, more prominent. So this is before, and this is after painting the window, and after adding some halation. And we can even do two passes on it, where we have a second one even brighter. Um, that's a common thing to, to do uh, in CG, like several layers of, uh, of, of glow or blur. Um, although I do think that we might have gone too far here, it would be nice to suggest that there is something off screen. Otherwise, it might look like we are like floating on a balloon into the sky, right? So we want to introduce something at the bottom of the frame, if we can, so that there's like either foliage or like a distant cityscape, something that would block uh, the light, right? So now it feels, compared to how it was before, it feels like we're in a more traditional setting where we're in an attic and we're looking at the horizon, but on the horizon line, there is something. And the way I was able to find the horizon line, I essentially, I suspect it will be somewhere here. It will just kind of draw a continuation of the perspective lines and then where they meet, that's your horizon line, right? So for the floor, you can see how we have those lines over here, they tend to meet somewhere in this area, right? So the horizon line is somewhere here. And that's why I painted these shapes kind of leaning towards the horizon. Uh, so whenever you're working with a window, try to keep in mind that it's very, very hard for humans on a planet that is populated, in a city especially, to actually have a clear horizon line, there's usually something in the way. It's a tree, it's a building. Uh, there's, it tends to be very, very difficult for your eye to reach the horizon line uninterrupted, unless you're floating on a balloon. So for example, something like a cloud that we see here, very unlikely you would see a cloud float uh, right at the horizon line. Usually the atmospheric perspective would block it. So you would only see clouds around here or here, but as they proceed towards the horizon line, they will sort of fade uh, into the atmosphere. All right.
So that's, again, a whole lot of talking and not a whole lot of painting. So let's keep moving. So I think we want our eye to go here or here. So it's kind of unfortunate that this door is so bright. Let's see how other people have solved this problem in their reference. So some people solve the problem by blocking the opening. Um, that might be a solution. This is not very easy, but um, like I don't have a very good solution for this on the spot. But let's just pretend that uh, the door hinges on the other side. Uh, so let's just take this guy and make it a warm shadow, make it maybe a little bit more saturated. Let's just paint this whole thing dark. Uh, let's just pretend that the door is actually on the other side. And if this is not something that we can change, uh, let's have the conversation. But right now that door is just the place with the highest contrast, right? Uh, maybe it's just a matter of changing the material so it's more of this wood. Maybe that can get us there without too much of a headache. Um, but yeah, the tricky thing is that this side, which is not facing the light, is already so bright. So let's just see what we can do to reduce some of the contrast in this area. So already, just because this doesn't go quite fully white, this helps to lead our eye back to the, uh, the image over there. Uh, also, let's try to be, let's try to think about what is this light? It appears to be coming from somewhere in here. And I can tell by following the shadow line here. Um, if there is indeed a light somewhere over here, it likely will be covered or would have some kind of, uh, uh, it wouldn't just be a floating light bulb, I imagine. so. We can paint some degree of gradation here to suggest that this light exists in a real space, right? It's like a designed light bulb, uh, like it has a cover. It's not um, just free floating. So that can help us come up with more specific, a more specific look for our light. Like whenever when I, when I saw that, uh, that doesn't quite feel believable because if I followed his line, um, the light bulb, it either it would be a gigantic hallway or the light would be hanging really high. Um, so my suggestion would be to clarify at what height the light bulb is. See, in all these references, I get the feeling that the light is coming more from a more parallel uh, angle. In this one, it feels really high up. Uh, so I would just try to, I'm gonna paint over here so we can see what, what I'm talking about, but I would just try to um, keep it a little bit more parallel rather than so high up. All right, so we previously talked about how uh, we wanted to differentiate between warm shadows and cool shadows, right? So the area where the light source comes from, because there's going to be a degree of bounce light, uh, we're gonna want to paint those shadows a little lifted, warmer and more saturated, right? Because that's warm light hitting like wooden materials and then bouncing around. So there's a lot of that warm wood material that would contribute to the, the color of the shadows. So all of this area that right now is feeling kind of like dingy, it's like you can't quite tell if it's supposed to be warm or cool. I'm gonna just go and apply a wash of warm finger. I messed it up. 
let's try this again so all of this area that is gonna be closed by the warm light we're gonna paint the overall warmer it's gonna be a little tricky to do this without completely removing the information that we have but we can try our best and hopefully once I have this selection I can reuse it so I don't have to do this more than once okay so now we have this side now we can paint we can grab this for the other side and you can see that I'm not uh, selecting the whole room I'm just selecting the area that is immediately um, by the door okay and I am opting to keep those uh, frames out because I don't want to remove their information How can I remove this guy? Okay, sorry, the hotkeys for removing something from a selection are tricky when you want to use the uh, the lasso in like poly mode rather than the freehand mode. All right, so I think we grabbed most of the area that was feeling a little dingy, right? Uh, I'm gonna just simplify all of that. Okay. So now let's just create this as an alpha. Right, and now I'm just going to come here and areas that felt uh, kind of unclear, we're going to clarify that these are actually warm, these are a little brighter, a little warmer. And then we're going to just start painting, right? So now suddenly you feel the warmth, right? If I take this off, you wouldn't know that there is a warm light there, right? But now we have a clear separation between warm shadows and cool shadows um, and I'm gonna paint over some of those details and then we can come back later and and fix it um, so we don't want to fill everything with the same brightness in fact we want to go a little brighter and a little bit more saturated and a little bit more towards uh, yellow as we get brighter and we're gonna move a little darker, a little bit more saturated, and towards red. And you can feel how this progression feels very natural. Huh. I accidentally forgot to remove this guy from the selection. I think I already have that. Yeah, I already have it. So I can just uh, remove it from this alpha. Come on, be nice to me. All right, we just removed it. Um, although we can probably go further and remove it from here too, because those those planes should not be catching warm light because they're facing away from it. Uh, it's probably a little heavy-handed, I'll admit, but it gets the point across. And we can try and fade it back with the original image so that we regain some of the original details. But uh, if you squint, this is right. This is like this is feeling like a warmer shadow now. Okay. And if we look at the reference, it's probably... closer to what the references was like. Still trying to debate how saturated we should go with this. Yeah, this feels right. All right. Uh, something else that a lot of 
uh, the reference I'm seeing has is that the key also feels brighter. So we can make uh, the key a little brighter still. So uh, something tricky that you can easily do in an illustration is precisely control where the key falls. Uh, in CG, it usually tends to produce uh, a lot of unappealing, unwanted shadows and uh, unwanted detail. So this can be a little tricky to our direct. Uh, so often what you might end up doing is painting a gobu that gives you a more precise shape for your key. Um, so here is a thing that I'm, I think we're going to run into. Because we have both a warm light over here from the, light, the spotlight, and we have a similarly warm light here, they're going to tend to overlap, and we're not going to be able to tell which one is which, right? So I think we might want to do what they did in this reference, where they purposely kept them separate. This way they don't mix, and uh, it's easier to keep the palette of the image and the complexity of the image at bay. So how about we try to maybe close this door a little bit more? Uh, so that might give us, or maybe we just need to adjust uh, the height of the light and the placement of the light. But essentially, it's, let's try to keep this area in shadow from the outside light. I'm just going to grab the color that we have here and just do a wash of that, just so that even though it's not the, the color we're going to use in the end, so this way we can just pretend that this image started out this way, right? Okay. So after we do that, we should see that now that light from the table is a lot easier to read. Like if we look at this image and we ask what's light in the area, it should be easier to, to know what is lighting it. Uh, we might want to adjust this so it's a little bit clearer. So let's try something like that, right? Although we probably don't want it to end on a tangent with the carpet, because that could be confusing, right? So essentially, we just wanted to try and keep those two lights from mixing with one another. We don't want to confuse the audience as to which is which, right? Um, so yeah, it might be best to maybe close this door so that this only becomes a little sliver of light. Uh, I'll leave that up to you, but the only important thing that I think we want to make sure to avoid is for this table to be lit in a way that doesn't make it very clear what light is shining on it. Because right now, I look at these two values and they're so similar, and I cannot tell which one is lit from this light and which one is lit from the outside, right? So I'm actually going to take these values and push them into shadows so that they're still warm because they're next to that light, but they are dimmer. Maybe tricky to find the exact value we're looking for. And then because this area is going to be in shadow, we can just push it back. And because it's so close to the door and it's also so close to the spotlight, all of those shadows will be warm shadows. There's going to be a lot of bounce in here. But we still want them to be darker so that the table can read bright and dark, right? So I'm going to grab this value we had here, make it more saturated and warmer, and just paint and then keep getting warmer, darker, more saturated towards red. Okay. All right, so now that we found this value, we can actually propagate it over here a touch, a little brighter, less saturated towards orange. And we can do the same thing over here. And we can do the same thing 
over here, just a touch, maybe a little brighter, less saturated. Okay. So now it should be very obvious that the light on the table is coming just from the uh, light, right? But the table is feeling a little sad, so let's bring back a little bit of warmth into it. Okay, and uh, now it's getting a little too bright, right? We don't want our bounce to feel so bright that it becomes as bright as the key, right? It, it's supposed to be bounce light, so it should always be, it should always look darker than the light that is producing it. And something that I really like about all of your references is how bright and overwhelming this light outside is. In the original, it was feeling a little dim. So now that we are not really using this for almost anything, because it's not shining on anything, we can actually go in and make it really overwhelming. And what I mean by that is that it's going to be so overwhelmingly bright that you actually cannot see much detail in it, right? It kind of washes away all the detail. Uh, and then you start to reveal what actual color the light is. Really, you only see that on the edges because the light is so bright that it goes towards white, right? What we talked about before. So you can only really see the temperature of the light in the midtones. And that will tend to give you the kind of like saturated edge that you see so often painted in, uh, um, in the artwork. It's usually just a reflection of how bright the light is. And just to make it brighter, I'll do the same trick where we're gonna glow it. Um, this specific trick can be done either in post, if you have the light as a separate light AUV, or in render, if you use a gobu. You can just use a second gobu that is softer and a duplicate of the key that is also softer. That will tend to give you this kind of saturated edges. Okay, so it's not feeling quite convincing to me. Um, I think we might have gone maybe too bright. I think we lost some of the original saturation in there. I think we have room to bring back some information. Right, so we keep the brightest area, uh, mostly at the towards the entrance. All right, and uh, let me just clean this up a little bit. Okay, too many layers. Okay, and now let me see if I can smooth these just a touch. Okay, uh, kind of rough. I'm not too happy with it, but you get the idea. Uh, we just ideally want to keep this key contained so it doesn't spill too far into into the room. I see. I painted all of this in the same layer. Uh, okay, so let's just move on, right? Otherwise, we're never going to finish this. 
so we can make this a, a brighter just so the door feels a little bit more integrated but um, just hesitant because we don't want to get in the same spot where we were before where the door appeared so bright that our eye went there we want to make sure we have some kind of grad it could be that maybe the door is not fully open and some of the light is just coming from the opening this is going to be something that uh, you might want to explore but for now I'll just paint it semi-open, right? Something like that. And then you can decide how you want to do it. But um, let's just try it not to have the light moving too into the room. So we can keep this just lit by the spotlight. All right, so now that we did that, uh, we definitely want to get rid of this bright reflection here. And for anything that is glass, uh, I would try to make sure that you have some kind of reflection. Uh, it would be ideal if you don't have to cheat it. It would be ideal if this is a real reflection that the shaders are giving you for free. But if you don't appear to get it, after you light the set the way you're happy with, just go in and um, add a couple of spec hits, like a couple of lights that are just dim enough to catch some of those picture frames, some of those assets, and get some kind of information in there, right? Um, so this guy that was so fogged up, we actually want to go in and sculpt it a little bit, right? We don't want it to be so sad and like in a weird place where it's like unclear if it's in light or in shadow. I we want to make it clearly in shadow on that side and then clearly lit by warm bounce light in the front especially towards the bottom, if it's closest to the floor. Uh, same thing for this tool. We want to clarify that this tool is in shadow, yes, but next to a warm light source. And this area can go darker because it's gonna all the light is gonna be blocked by the table. Okay, so I think this specular highlight on the floor is creeping a little bit too far. So my suggestion is to try and limit the the reach of that. But before we get too far into those details, let's uh, address a similar note as here, but for this side. I also feel like this area is getting a little bit uh, dingy in terms of the temperature. Like it shouldn't be as bright as that side because we are further away from the opening, but it should still feel a little warm, right? So it's gonna be darker, we know that. Uh, we want it to be warmer, but not as warm. So let's go this way and a little bit towards red because red is the closest hue to purple. Once we enter purple, we are in the cold shadows, right? So now we are in the cold shadows. So if I paint this area with purple, this area will appear to be in the shadows, right? But the area over here is still getting warm light. So it's like on the cusp. So it can be a little tricky to find the exact hue that we're going for, uh, but we definitely should avoid the warm light and the cool light for mixing. All right, so let me throw away this mask. All 
Alright, I feel like I'm being scammed here. I do not want... I don't want this mask, I want to delete the mask. Okay. Sorry, for a moment I was going crazy. Okay. Alright, so now we make sure that we don't affect the windows here, right? And we can go here and remove all of this stuff. Uh, and we can play with the... We can, let's just leave this for now. Even though it washes some, some of the detail, we can just keep it as is. Um, so now, it would be ideal if we can clarify that those planes that are facing the opening are getting a little warmer. Like, pull them away from uh, the kind of gray area they are. We should just clarify that they are still getting some warm light. It might not be as strong as it was, but those planes should be feeling a little warmer. And also it would be ideal if we could feel like this uh, light is sh shining here. Uh, I don't know if we should feel the light shining also on the floor, but I do think we should feel that this whole area is a little warmer now. Like even in the shadows, because it's in such close proximity to the opening, I feel like we shouldn't allow it to go this muddy. And by muddy, I mean like these weird grays that are kind of blue. We should just clarify, hey, you're warmer, you know? And then as it goes dimmer, it goes towards red, gets darker, and all of that. Okay? Uh, and we can try to bring back some of that detail, but stay within the same kind of palette, right? Um, and yeah, this specular highlight, I don't think that it helps us. So if we can reduce it on the floor, let's try. Because uh, I don't think it's really helping us, unfortunately. All right, so we got the area uh, adjacent to the door figured out. Now I think we should worry about the, the cool values that are not directly by the door. So uh, on a new layer, I'm just gonna do like a broad selection for anything that is very close to camera. Um, literally gonna just do a broad, broad selection. I'm not gonna try to be too precise yet. We also, do want to respect the integrity of some of those assets, right? We don't want to go completely ballistic on the, on the silhouette. Okay, so we want to make sure that this area um, feels darker. So I'm just going to create a new mask and then go as dark as we can without going black and just really go at it. Right? So all of this area will need to be dark. So that means all of those areas that we see here that appear lifted, we just want them to go dark. Uh, they will give us essentially a, a foreground, kind of like we see here, something in the foreground that is clearly darker, that can help us increase the depth of the image. Uh, like in, in this frame, these elements that are darker in the foreground, they help to produce depth because then we can use them to read something behind them, right? Because otherwise, we have a lot of complexity here, a lot of values that are too similar in range. It can be hard to tell which guitar is in front. They're all the same value. So we want to um, sort of use stepping, where the darker the value, the closer to a camera is. And then for this guitar in the foreground, for example, we can take it even darker. Right, so that's why we don't want to go too dark right away. We want to keep some of the contrast to differentiate elements that are actually even closer to camera. But overall, anything that is leaning towards camera needs to be darker, right? So now we have a foreground, and within that foreground, we have essentially two layers of blocking. 
So now this floor, uh, sorry, this wall is feeling too bright, right? So we want to go in and introduce some gradients. And compared to before where we had some cools and warm values mixing, we want to make sure that all the values in the shadows feel clearly cool. Uh, as far as how we go about keeping the colors from mixing, uh, it's up to you. You can do it with like region grads or rods or um, whatever it is called in the uh, lighting package that you're using. But we just want to make sure that we avoid um, any mixing of hues. Because when you mix a warm light and a cool light, it tends to go gray, unfortunately. So we want to try and avoid that. So I'm going to take this value, which you had, and make it more saturated, but darker. And as it gets darker, it will lean towards blue, right? And so now we're really going at it and making all of this area darker. So the transition between a cool area and a warm area is going to be interesting, right? Because eventually we're going to hit a point where these values need to, in theory, reach gray, right? Because they're getting warmer and they're getting brighter. Uh, as far as how you deal with that, I'll leave that up to you. If you look at some of your reference, you'll find that some of those values are indeed almost gray. See? A lot of those values are almost gray. They're like very saturated in the light. They might be very cool in the shadows. Uh, but as, they, as the warm and the cool meet, uh, you'll tend to get values that are closer to gray, right? Uh, Let's see what happens when we get there. But in the meantime, let's try to clearly separate what's in light and what's in shadow. So now that we have the structure of the image in place, we can go and fine tune it. So for example, these areas that are facing downwards, we're going to want the planes facing down to be brighter and warmer because they're receiving light from the, the warm light from the floor, right? But other values that are not, we need to go cooler and darker. So, right now we're picking a purple. This purple should be a more saturated and brighter red to orange, okay? See, so now those feel lit by the bounce, right? Um, and if we can, we'll be able to regain some contrast. Like a lot of these areas are feeling a little low contrast would be ideal if we can regain some contrast in there. So we don't want to go too cool with those cools, right? Because the bounce light should kind of um, fill those in a touch. But we do want to get some contrast in there, like really separate those two planes. Like those two planes were feeling a little too similar before. Let's try to separate them, essentially, right? Uh, something that stands out to me is that we lost some of the shaping on this guy. So I'm going to bring that back. Um, and let me just bring back this picture frame that we sort of lost compared to where we were before. And for all of those picture frames, as I already mentioned, let's try to get some kind of a spec hit. If they are in a warm area, we probably should expect the spec hit to stay warm because they're probably going to be reflecting something nearby, right? So let's try to see if we can do that. Same for this clock. We should now be getting a cool spec hit on it if it's facing a warm light. So kind of like calm it down and then introduce some warm spec hits. Okay. 
uh, and then there's something complex in here. Let's just try to simplify it so that we really only see complexity and contrast on the table, okay? We want to keep our image as simple as we can, like as easy to digest as possible. So now I'm kind of grouping the whole area on the table into one shape. Uh, so now looking at this image, I feel like we got cool a little too fast over here. So I'm gonna go and and this is gonna be the tricky part, the transition from light to shadow. That's always a little tricky to, to paint. So I'm just gonna essentially start from the value that we found and then go into a cooler version, right? And then we start to go darker. And you see, even though it's such a similar value, it already feels so much cooler. And it's possible we might be getting there a little too quickly. So it's going to be a little tricky to find the right transition, but this is uh, probably a good place to start. Yeah, I feel like this purple is too saturated, right? Now it's feeling a little dingy. So this is the tricky part where you're transitioning. Okay, something like that. And we removed a lot of the local detail. So let me just bring it back. And let's reintroduce some of the information that we painted over. So some of those boards details, let's just reintroduce some of the texture in there so that we can still get some clues perspective wise. Because even though we might have painted a value that is closer to what we want it to be, we lost a lot of the perspective and architectural cues. So the image will not read uh, as well without them. Okay. Uh, now we can go back and add a couple of small variations like the little plate that maybe should catch a little bit more light. Um, Maybe you want this carpet to feel like he has a darker side here. Yeah, I think we're getting somewhere. So now we talked about how the spotlight was feeling a little bit too artificial. So what I'm going to do is just paint this kind of um, halo around it and colorize it just so we can force a color onto it, right? And we're going to pick something like that. And then um, we can change the blending mode and play with a value that feels right. And then we can duplicate it, for example, and just blur it. Uh, and in CG, you would do essentially like similar to this method where you would just glow it uh, maybe a few times with different values, different hues. But essentially, essentially you want to try to mitigate some of the harsh uh, light quality that we had before. Yeah, something subtle like that, right? Um, so because we removed so much of the detail that we had in there, it's feeling a little artificial. So let's bring back some of that detail. So for example, this area should probably catch a little bit of bounce from the table like it was before, right? And now that the lamp is the only light source in this area, um, it should be very easy to to art direct it because we don't have to worry about other light source mixing in, right? So we can just paint this area just a little bit brighter and then get it darker, redder on the edges. Okay, so now we regain some of that uh, bounce. 
and then we can just go in and paint some like local variation like I guess there's like a frame in here or a picture or a poster um, but we want to stay within the same blocking right we don't want to introduce contrast that will pull us away we just want to within that blocking that we achieve achieve a touch of variation And yeah, let's bring back some of this detail in here. Um, we lost the separation between the two walls in here. So my guess is that um, because this wall is closer, it probably will get a little brighter, but this guy is also blocking the light. So Let's just try to regain a, a touch of separation between the walls here. So I'm just going to paint a touch darker in this area, essentially. Just a touch, just so that we can convey that this is where the, the two walls meet, essentially. Uh, and we shouldn't be afraid to go darker around here because I don't think we would see much cool light because the window is not supposed to reach over here so I would rule out that there would be so much cool light pouring in so we can actually take this and go much darker uh, in terms of temperature I'm not sure if it would be this warm we might end up in a spot where it's just dark and not quite warm and not quite cool which is, a, which is fine, because it's going to be so dark that it might not matter, essentially. But we simply, I simply don't think that we should um, paint it blue, uh, keep it blue, because light shouldn't, like, window light from the outside shouldn't be able to reach in those areas. So we should, we can just keep them darker. All of this area can just go darker. Okay, so I think we are almost there. Uh, so looking at the images, I now clearly feel like that is the focus of the image, so that's working really nicely. I do think maybe that will need to come down. I don't think it's helping us very much. So I might just go back here and layer 5. Is it you? I don't think it's you. What layer is it? Layer 4. Okay. Such descriptive names. So for layer 4, we might just want to come in and, uh, and darken this guy. Because I think it's pulling in too much, too much away from, from the, la uh, the lamp. Even then, that might just not be, might not be working. Uh, yeah, I would noodle with it, but if we end up in a place where we know that it's not helping, uh, I would not be shy about just taking it down and keeping most of the light coming from screen left instead, the, the cool light, right? All right, so one more thing. I feel like this area is getting kind of dingy, uh, and because it's so close to the warm light source, it's really a shame. So let me clarify a little bit that you guys should not be dingy at all so all of this area that is going dingy and gray and unclear what temperature it is will need to be firmly in the warmth camp so you are warmer okay because you're so close to the warm light there's no excuse to be dingy okay um, this guy is probably feeling a little silhouetted, this like airplane. So let's make sure that we have some information in there. Um, 
it's nice that it reads dark and bright, but I would just try to make sure that there's shaping in it. So the side that is facing the window should receive either some specular heat, uh, we should just see a separation of planes, right? So it's not uh, this flat. Like it's nice that it's a silhouette that it reads, but within that silhouette, we should try and introduce some variation. Mm, I think this sums it up. I'll just do a couple more adjustments here because I think we removed too much architectural elements from this table. So we want to regain some of that because I don't want you to think that we should just lose all sense of what this guy is. Uh, we just need to keep it in the shadows. This way it won't be as distracting or as confusing to have it lit by a warm light that could be either the spot or the door. We want to make sure that it's clear that it's coming from bounce light. And then we can get this area brighter if that's where we want to show the audience should be looking at. Maybe there's an important map or something. Yeah, we can keep those the brightest spots in the image. Like the the most contrast essentially. Uh, all right, I think this does it for this paint over. Um, let me know what you think. Um, oh, actually. I think we have an opportunity here to reinforce the light direction. If you don't mind this area, let's see if we can reinforce the light direction by the window. Before they were going a little green, so let's prevent them from going green. Let's try to keep them clearly blue. Um, but let's try to avoid them going green. It would be ideal if those planes facing the window are clearly a little bluer, brighter. Like it would be very neat if we could get some very subtle hint that there is a cool light in here. So it affects a little bit more than just that specular highlight. Same thing we did before. I feel like we lost separation on the wall here. So we want to very quickly regain that. All right, and this is it for real. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this paint over. Uh, Angela, I hope that you find this useful. All right, thank you guys.